I had the opportunity of attending DEF CON over the past few days, and I met some amazing people, and I learned a bunch of stuff. I had a great, great time. One of the things I was reminded of is how insecure some of our early implementations of wireless were. So traditionally, we'll have access points, which are radio transmitters, receivers, and we have clients with wireless network interface cards. They associate with an access point. We secure the communication between that device and the access point, and then the access point is traditionally wired into the rest of the network. That's all well and good. One of the early attempts at securing this is called WEP. And unfortunately, if people are still using that today, it can be very easily broken just by a random device listening in on the network who can then discover what that password is. So I thought to myself, self, I haven't ever tried that myself. I haven't launched the tools and verified that I can actually do that. I think I'm going to give it a shot, expand my horizons a little bit. Instead of just taking it on faith, try it out. So here's what I did. And actually, before we start, please read this part in red right here. Only use these tools that I'm going to share with you on your own network or networks that you are legally and authorized in writing to do this on. So the story we're going to talk about here is the fact that maybe I've got an access point for whatever reason. I set it up for WEP, which I shouldn't have. Friends, don't let friends use WEP. But I did, and now I forgot the password, and I don't want to re reboot the whole router or the whole access point. I need to recover the password. So that's my story that surrounding this demonstration here. So how do I gather it? Well, here's what I did. I installed on a laptop the Backtrack 5 release 2 of Backtrack. It's a Linux distribution that has some, some amazing tools as part of it. So on that Backtrack server, this one right here, all I did was I installed it. I enabled networking. So let me scroll up here a little bit. I installed Backtrack. I enabled networking. And I also have two interface cards. I have a wireless interface and I have a Ethernet card on copper. So the Ethernet one has an IP address, and the wireless is not associated yet with any access point. So that's the three things I did. I also, just for demonstration purposes, I enabled SSH on the Backtrack server so I could give you a console during this demo that you could actually read. That's a great thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect, and we're going to basically go down this list, and we're going to enable wireless monitoring. I'll step you through piece by piece each one. We're going to discover the basic server set identifiers, the access points that are out there. We're going to tell my Backtrack server to keep track of the information it learns in a specific file. Then we're going to, it says authenticate, <laughs> it says we're going to authenticate with an AP. We're going to play some games with an AP to make, we're going to fake an authentication with an AP, and then we'll generate some traffic. We'll take a look at that, tra the, the capture file that we get from all that and we can actually decode from that what the actual web key is. You or I, once you've done it a couple times, could do this in like two to three minutes. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Okay, so let's, uh, let's bring up a terminal session. And what this is right here, this is three SSH connections going to that one server right here, this one backtrack server. All right, so the very first thing we're going to do is we're gonna set up the wireless monitoring. How do you do that? We're going to use this command right here, and it's called airmon ng. Now, for most uh, commands in Linux, if you need help with a command, you can just do dash, dash, help. Sometimes it's a dash h, sometimes it's a dash help, not always consistent, but there's the syntax for airmon. So if we just type in airmon ng by itself, it's going to show us our wireless adapters. If we want to enable monitoring on one of those adapters, we would use the start option. See right here, we have this start option. So we can say airmon ng start and then the name of our interface, which is WLAN0. So we'll go ahead and use that one. And now it started. Now, I want you to pay special attention to the commands that we're using. All we've used so far is we've used airmon ng and we used airmon with the start option pointing to our wireless interface. But check this out right here. It says now that Monitor mode is enabled on Mon Zero. It's like, I didn't even know I had a Mon Zero. Well, you do, and you just logically created it. So if we do the same command again, right here, you'll notice we have this Mon Zero interface. And now, any time we want to refer to these tools I'm about to show you for monitoring purposes, the wireless interface we'll want to refer to is Mon Zero. It's a logical monitoring interface associated with the wireless physical interface. All right, so in our journey, we've taken a look at Airmon. We've run it twice, actually three times. 
one to see what we had first, one to enable wireless monitoring, and then once again just by itself to go ahead and look at the actual results. Super, we're off to a great start. The next piece we're gonna do is we need to discover the basic service set identifiers out there. Now, what I've done before I show you this is I I got my hands on a D-Link. <laughs> um, I actually got it at a garage sale for five bucks and so I, I updated the firmware on it and I ran it and I set up WEP. And I did that from a separate machine. So it wasn't done from the PC I'm on, it wasn't done from Backtrack, it was done completely from a separate machine to keep it totally isolated from this demo here. So it's running and I left the default name of D-Link, isn't that great? And I did, however, put a password for administrator. So there's a password there, but the uh, I'm using WEP, W-E-P, for the actual security, which again is a bad idea. Now we're going to go discover all the access points that are out there with this command right here. Arrow dump NG and specify the interface that we have for monitoring. So the syntax looks like this. That's it. And now when I press enter, the command is going to go away. And just like this too, if I wanted help for this, I could do dash dash help. And it gives me all the syntax for that command. But for now, I just want to go ahead and do, so I want to do this command right here. And now that's out there listening to all of the access points and all the channels and learning all the information. Now this is not proprietary information. You can get a lot of this just from your operating system. As you try to find a, an access point, it's going to give you a list of all the access points. And I've got a bunch here that are being learned. But the one I'd like to pay attention to is this one right here. And that's the D-Link at the very top. It's, it's scanning through the channels, if you look right here, and it's finding out how strong the signal is. But the most important thing is this D-Link, which I will... Oh, got another one there. And look at this. I've got a Cisco... So we're looking right now for anybody who has WEP. So all of these other individuals have WPA2 or WPA, which is great. I've got one using WEP, a Cisco 3475. That's not mine, and I'm not going to disturb that or look into it. But this top one, the D-Link, is mine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this information. All I really need is the basic service set identifier, and I also need the channel. So it's this number here and channel 3. So if I want to bring up a new uh, text edit document, for example, and I'll do it right here. I just paste that information in that I copied, and I really just need those two elements. So it's channel three, I'll make it a little bit bigger. And this, your numbers will vary, of course. I'll make that bigger. And I might want to copy this because I'm going to be putting it into my configs here in just a moment. So there's the basic service set identifier. There's the channel for this D-Link device, which is running web. I want to find out what the password is for that. So now that we have that information, we can use air dump again and this time what we're going to do is, let me show you air dump the syntax one more time here, the options. And let me control break out of that. There we go. So control C to break out of that. And let's go ahead and do air dump dash dash help. So there's tons of options here, but one I want to do is I want to use the W option. And that's the same as W write. And we're going to write to a file. So basically I'm going to tell air dump, listen. I want you to pay attention to channel 3, to the basic service set identifier of the this number right here, 00, etc., etc., and write it to a file. And that way, anything you collect, we can go ahead and analyze later. And we'll analyze the results of that with another tool here in a moment. So let's go ahead and tell it to do exactly that. We'll go back to this interface. And we'll simply tell it we want to save all that information to a file. And the syntax for that is right here, the dash W for the writing, the dash C for the channel, the WEP represents the file I want to save it to, and it'll end that with a dot CAP. And we'll tell it to pick everything up off Mon0. All right, so now it's on its way. It's happy, happy recording that information. Let's take a look at our play-by-play. -play. We enabled wireless monitoring with this command right here with the Airmon NG. We used air dump for discovering the channel. We also used air, air dump for writing out the file of all it collects. Now the next thing we're gonna do is a little bit mean, but we're going to fake an authentication with this specific AP. Now just to remind you, this is my AP. I set it up, it's on my home network, it's under my control, I purchased it. So I'm not attacking anyone else, it's simply my own. So the next thing we wanna do is we want to fake an authentication. And we're gonna do that with a command called 
Airy Play NG. And just like everything else, if you need help with any of these commands of syntax, we're going to go to a second window here. And we can simply type in the command. And to get help with it, dash dash help. And that gives us all of the options for the help here. And what we want to do is we're going to do this guy right here. We're going to fake an authentication with the AP. And we're going to specify the channel in use. And we're also going to specify the interface, which is our monitoring interface. So the syntax for all that looks something like this. So Airy Plan G, dash one, zero, dash A, and then the basic service set identifier and the interface. Okay, and sending authentication request, authentication successful. And now the, the next step in our process is we're going to go ahead and generate some traffic. Now, just so you know, in the background, I've also got other computers on that D-Link wireless network, and there's some traffic moving. There's a, there's a Macintosh, I think, back there doing some pings to the access point. There's a little bit of traffic already moving on that network. So now let's generate the rest of the traffic. And we're going to do that with the dash three option. So we're going to do standard ARP request replay <laughs> and send some traffic on the network. And then we're going to collect everything from our arrow dump utility we ran earlier. So for this, to use option three, we simply put in all the information required. So specifying the basic service set ID, the interface, and the dash three for the standard ARP replay, uh, request replay. And we'll press enter. So it's. It's going out there, doing the best it can, and uh, reading packets. So far, I've got zero ARP requests and zero acts. And normally, I would expect that to pick up a little. There we go. So now it's getting some responses and it's gathering data. Once you have like, I don't know, 20,000 or 30,000 packets, it's probably enough for your sample size. And you can go ahead and uh, simply continue. So let's take a look right here. So here's my data packets, 16,000. We'll let it get to 20,000. That should be well enough to make it happen. And let's, re let's, see, let's review the process we went through. We used Airmon NG for enabling wireless. We discovered the basic service set identifier and the channel with AirDump. We told AirDump to write that information to a file. And then we authenticated with the AP with Air Replay, and now we're generating a whole bunch of bogus traffic with Air Replay. Just so we can get enough data to do the analysis to find out what the key is. So yeah, that's been thirty-eight thousand. That's probably enough. So uh, let's uh, let's go back in and let's stop this. We'll do a Control C, and that'll stop the generating of that traffic. If we go back here, that should have. So the beacons are there, but the normal data that we were generating, that's slowed way, way down because we're not generating anymore. And let's do it ls-l. So these are a whole bunch of files in the root folder. What we want to look for is files that end with cap. So we'll do a ls-l. Actually, we just do this. That'll work. I choose hard. All right, so this is our file. So I did some earlier practicing here, and this is our file. Right now on my clock, it's 1108 in the morning and the 29th of July 2012 and this is the file that was just written so that's the collection of all the data now how exactly do we determine that's what the web key is and the answer is we use a tool called air crack and that's the last step in our puzzle <laughs> so I'm scrolling down here so air crack we're going to use it to look at the cap file and determine what the key is and it's going to do most of the work for us so I'm going to do aircrack ng, and then I'm just going to, going to copy the name of this file and put that in here and press enter, and it's going to go ahead and an analyze it. And it's done. See, that wasn't very long. So the password was cafe. It's in hex. I put it in hex. It says cafe, C-A-F-E-B-A-B-E-12, cafe babe 12. And that's it. That's the web key for that. Now, how long would that take to run it? Well, if... If you were sitting in an environment where you had your Backtrack server all set up, you basically enable wireless monitoring. You discover the basic service set. You tell it to save it to a file, the one we just looked at. You authenticate with Air Replay. You generate traffic, and then you look at the file with AirCrack, step by step. So that's how you do it. Again, only use this on a closed track, on your networks where you're authorized to do it. And in conclusion, I'd like to give a couple of tips regarding what we just learned. 
Number one, friends don't let friends run WEP. You don't want to allow that. What should you run? You should run WPA or WPA2, and that is more secure. Secondly, you can also filter which MAC addresses are allowed on your APs, and that will help a bunch as well. I appreciate you watching, and have a great, great rest of the day.